Good morning, everyone. Um, as you can see, today's episode is about the garden because what else can we show you? We haven't done anything else. Uh, we have recovered from the flu or whatever it, it was. I still have a bit of a uh, weird voice from time to time, but it's okay now. And so we'll show you around the garden again. <laughs> But it's going to be like a proper tour and we well ourselves have to have a look what's been doing really well and what hasn't um yeah and that's it really that'll be for today's episode i suppose but i would like to thank you first uh, all the new subscribers uh we gained uh, in the last month which is great so thank you for being here and Hopefully you're going to enjoy today's episode. So yeah, let's get on with it. It's surprisingly still quite humid in the mornings. So there is dew everywhere, which some plants don't really appreciate right now, like gherkins and um, uh, some um, maybe pumpkins and that, because then the leaves get affected and the mildew sets in and that is the beginning of the end so what do we have here okay so all the peas well almost all the peas are almost gone and uh, here we have the salad cucumbers which uh, like i said about the leaves the bottom leaves are a little bit stained now the top are doing really well so there's one there we've already harvested like three cucumbers and so there's another one there it's a big one <laughs> um yeah so hopefully hopefully we're gonna get some more than just three or four or five cucumbers but it's you know it is the leaves that are being affected and um, we can't do much about that because we don't want to use too much chemicals or any chemicals really but sometimes we've got to so on the other side of the salad cucumbers we have um more carrots we sown and beetroot also which is doing really well we have beetroot in different places Well, the onions are ready, I suppose, to be pulled. Um, <laughs> I wonder how many we're going to end up with because we have issue with voles this year. They are eating literally everything, including garlic and onions, believe it or not. So, yeah, they are looking a little bit sad. So I think we'll have to have a look and take them out. Well, and the sunflowers, what can I say about the sunflowers, <laughs> apart from the fact that they are just wonderful, ginormous. <laughs> Look at this head. Oh my, it's bigger as mine, almost. Um, yeah, they are fab. They are fab flowers. They bring so much light and happiness into the garden yep it's neighbor's sheep these are meat along beans <laughs> they're not really meat along but good 50 centimeters yeah look at them <laughs> that is huh? Wow. Yeah. Is it ready? Uh huh. Is it ready? Mm hmm. I know. Okay, the beans are quite hard to see sometimes, so because they are 
yeah, just long and thin. You have to search a little bit. Yeah, uh, these are still too young, so we'll leave them. Okay. But there'll be plenty, plenty of them coming. And what have you got? Ah, uh, okay, a little cob. Right, and here we have the first row of tomatoes. And I think, hold on, <laughs> oh yes. It's orange. Ah, huh? ah, nice. So these are first tomatoes. <laughs> so the corn hasn't been doing that well. I don't know why. We never tend to get proper corn, proper cobs. You know, maybe the occasional one or two, but um, yeah, not particularly great, really. Right, so we have like a mixture of things. So these are salads. They have gone to seed, which we're going to pick some seeds, and then the rest will go to the chickens and ducks, and of course flowers, marigolds, teddy bear sunflower, plants. This should, this is actually not should. This is a cosmos, but it's still not flowering. We have other three or four plants, and they are just huge this year. So I've sown many petty pants <laughs> this year. Uh, so we are inundated with petty pants. They are literally everywhere, but they are beautiful. They are delicious as well. So here, this is the pumpkin. This is. Kuri Kuri pumpkin, can you see? Yeah, I think you can. And yeah, more petty pants here. We also have some uh, butternut squashes. And okay, let me find some. I think it was here. There are a few butternut squash plants, but oh, I can't see. Oh, yes, there it is. Yeah. Can you see? We oh dear, <laughs> yeah, beautiful. We have, of course, more than that. Strawberries have been doing exceptionally well this year, and so far, it is the best of five years' harvest. We started picking strawberries in June and keep picking them every other day. There are plenty of new fruits appearing at all times and I suppose it is the water that is very abundant at the site where the strawberries are. We replanted quite a few plants here last year in the spring and added sheep manure plus straw. They didn't seem to perform well last year, however this year is a different story. We tend to eat them fresh as I think making a jam is a bit of a waste of the delicious flavour and nutrients you get when eating them fresh, still warm from the sun. The plants also seem to spread naturally where they want to be and we leave them to do so. When picking berries, we usually do a bit of weeding in between, but otherwise we leave the plants be and live where and as they want. A little bit of weeding is also a part of our morning routine in the garden. Despite mulching the garden heavily with straw, the abundance of water is doing its wonders and grasses and other weeds are growing happily. Although we irrigate the garden through channels with free-flowing water from the water mines, some plants such as tomatoes or cucumbers like to be watered directly. We are trying to make the workload in the garden as effective and least time consuming as possible 
but some things cannot be cheated. Our garden is planted haphazardly, but also with intentions. Some plants like to grow next to each other, such as tomatoes and marigolds, or onions and carrots, and some like solitude. I suppose just like we humans. I remember my mother's garden with straight rows, void of any weeds, pathways weeded with precision. And then there was my grandmother's garden, full of diversity, smell and colour. Both were doing well in their own way. So whatever you do, as long as it's thriving, keep doing it. We always try to plant more than we can use, partly because of the loss due to weather conditions and partly because of the pests. Like this year, the voles are everywhere and eating literally everything, including garlic, onions and potatoes. Carrots seem to also be good for them. Summer in central Portugal can be cruel. High temperatures, dry winds and sticky nights when temperatures don't drop below 20 degrees Celsius are something to get used to, if you ever. We are extremely fortunate to live in a place where water is abundant and the altitude of 700 meters above sea level means we experience less heat than the village below. When it's 40 in the town, it's four degrees less where we live, and trust me, you can feel the difference. And now, with the added luxury of a plunge pool, this summer has been bearable weather-wise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a monster! <laughs> uh -huh.
Right, so we've just come back from the garden, spent there about two, two and a half hours. This is quite normal in the morning, sometimes it's only me or Susanna. Uh, we've done quite a lot anyway, so, and I picked um, what was ready, but um, I'm sure I've overlooked something, it happens all the time. So in this bowl we have a mixture of beans, the you know, the meat along, um, some tomatoes, raspberries, strawberries, and these little beauties, uh, which are nasturtium seed pods, which I'm going to tell you later what I'm going to do with them, and what you can do also. Then I picked some dill as well, some leaves, these are the gigantic <laughs> gigantic charred leaves I've never had anything like this so yeah this year it's crazy um of course courgette and then <laughs> some petty pants so they are all different sizes but you know the smaller ones the darker yellow almost orangey um, color they are ready uh, from different plant uh, yeah oh dear i'm sure i've overlooked something and those two volunteer cucumbers so not bad for this morning um we have well we've been eating um mostly just cold lunches and um yeah because uh, we don't really feel like having something hot when it's hot outside. So it's going to be salad and all the rest of it. I'll show you from uh, up close. Yeah, and here they are, the beauties. This is quite a nice one, big one. These are tiny, well, tiny compared to this, but these will be nice and ripe. And the leaves, the cucumbers. Yep, and the basket of fruit. And so the answer to a question, was it all worth the effort, is simply yes. Despite the hard work and preparation, despite the sweat in summer mornings, growing your own food is a skill we all should have access to regardless where we live. There is nothing more satisfying than to pick your own veggies and fruits and enjoy the fresh taste full of nutrients and goodness. We mustn't also forget the benefits it brings to our overall well-being mentally and physically. Walking barefoot on the ground, having your feet wet from the morning dew, stepping in the mud and cleaning your feet in the grass afterwards, all this, as insignificant as it may seem, helps us to connect to the world we live in, making us aware that we are one, we as humans are part of the universe and the environment and the nature. We are nature and we need to look after it. And in return, nature will look after us. So be kind to yourselves and those around you. Be kind to the animals and plants. They all want to live and we can help them to do so. <laughs> <laughs> 